Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the fuselage of the FT Legacy. Now, if you haven't heard about the FT Legacy before, this is basically what we call the founder's plane. Now, because of you guys, there's a new location that we get to call home called Edgewater Air Park. This was a result of an amazing crowdfund that was well funded, and because of that, you guys now have a place to call home. We wanted to find a proper way to thank people, so one of the perks was this plane called the FT Legacy. We're going to be showing you how to build the FT Legacy. It's available as a kit. It's also available as free downloadable plans. But one thing I strongly encourage you is anytime you see this plane, think of the amazing people that made our home a reality. This is going to be the build video for the fuselage only. And as you can see, we can build it in two different versions for the twin motor or the single motor. It's kind of like a pick your journey with a foam board airplane. Let's get our materials in order. We'll get started. So with this FT Legacy kit here, we, our speed build kit is quite involved. But what we did do is we did plank everything to mostly be together. That means the fuselage pieces will be with the fuselage, the wing will be with the wing. So let's go ahead and unpack this and get all the pieces we need for a fuselage. So yeah, as you can see, the FT Legacy is a very large airplane. Well, we're going to go ahead and lay these pieces out. I'm going to give you a general description. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the foam from the areas we want so we can glue it all together. We have our front main piece. We have our rear main fuselage piece. We have our doublers. We have our rear doublers for our servos. And then we have the center bomb bay area, which also serves as a former to keep everything square and true and also holds our main power pod. Along with that, we have a former. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and remove the cavities here from the area so we can do our A folds and our B folds. So a little tip here, we never want to be able to cut down through the paper. So what I like to do is I like to use sandpaper or a concrete floor and actually dull the front tip of the razor. This gives us the ability to cut through, but not cut all the way through the paper. Always make sure you check with a scrap piece of foam to make sure that you're not cutting through the bottom paper. And if you do, don't worry. You can easily use a piece of tape to fix it. So now that we have our foam pieces removed, we're gonna go ahead and join our two fuselage halves together. Now to do this, we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and we're gonna carefully line up the pieces so they match up exactly. We're gonna take a piece just a little bit longer and we're gonna split the middle right down their sides. And what I like to do is get one half down nice and clean, then lift it up, line up our edges, and then carefully press it into place. I'm gonna flip it over, just make sure all of our lines line up and that we're happy with what we see. Once we are, we can take a squeegee, or in this case, I'm going to use my triangle, and we're going to mat it down. So now with our two halves taped together, we're going to open up this up like a clamshell, and I'm going to put a generous amount of hot glue favoring it towards the actual edge of the foam that's going to glue to each other. Make sure you have enough so this will squeeze back into the paper and make it an even stronger joint. So right down on the edge, starting and stopping about a quarter inch. Don't worry if you get a little bit extra on there. It's not going to matter because we're going to squeegee that off. There we go. I'm going to press it down. Take a scrap piece of foam here. We're going to squeegee that down just like you see here. I also like to kind of run this down through here like so. Press this down nice and flat for about 45 seconds and let it thoroughly dry. Another thing I like to do is just run over this one final time to get that glue joint nice and smooth on the other side. Go ahead and cut the excess tape off. So now that we have our two fuselage halves glued together, we're going to go ahead and put our doublers on. Now this is a very important step because the way we put our doublers on, if it's crooked, it's going to make our little box that's actually going to square up our fuselage crooked as well. So you're going to notice that there's etch lines that are actually on the plants and also on our speedboat kit. We want to line these etch lines up as perfectly as possible. So make sure you take your time. I'm going to lay this down right over the back line. And then I'll put my attention towards the front line. Once again, take your time on this. Make sure that everything is nice and lined up. And then hold it down for 45 seconds. We're going to do the exact same process on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and clear out the servo gaps on the rear of the fuselage. I'm going to do the same process for our servo doublers as well. 
Now it's just as important on the back half to line up these doublers perfectly because these also help with making sure the fuselage is nice and square. You're going to notice that each doubler, one favors high with the open gap, one favors low. That's so the two servos can stagger. So don't worry about the fact that the two sides are different. We're going to apply our glue right down over the edge lines. If you're scratch building this model, the edge lines are going to be coated in blue. Big thank you to Dan Sponholz for doing such a great job in drawing up our free plants. I strongly recommend if you're going to build this for the first time, get the speed build kit and trace out your pieces because it's seven sheets long and over 40 pieces. That's one side down. We'll go ahead and do the other side. Our next step is we're going to go ahead and glue over the paper on these three edges here. This is going to give us a nice finished edge and also add a lot of strength to the airplane. We're going to put a little bit healthier than normal bead of glue. And then if you're using something like a steel rule, which is really nice because the glue won't glue to it, you fold it up, count about 15, and then fold it over. Same process on the other two. A little bit healthier to bead than normal. Fold it over and press it down. Working that glue out towards the edge. But we're going to put our attention towards this box. Now this box has a doubler and you're also going to notice it has an end piece here. It's very crucial that we keep a square like this or even something like a CD case that has perfect perpendicular edges. We want to make sure that when we're putting this fuselage together, everything measures up to be 90 degrees. All right, before we begin here, we're going to go ahead and fold over our piece of paper for extra strength and a finished look. We just did that step on the doubler. It should be pretty familiar to you. This one we can use the table as our friend. And right back to the table, wander it forward. So before we do any gluing, we're always going to want to make sure that we test fit everything. You're going to notice that this is a B fold. A B fold is where the side cheeks go beside the bottom plate. So think B beside. And to do a proper beep fold, we're going to go ahead and leave the bottom plate on the table and we're going to rotate the side plate up 90 degrees so it's next to the bottom plate. On our kits and also on our plans, you're going to notice that there's a diagram saying A or B. You can look at that diagram as pretty much a cross cut of the actual way that you're supposed to fold this. Make sure you test this fit before you glue it down because if you glue it down wrong, things won't line up properly. We can even drop our piece in that we see right here. Do our test fit, making sure everything lines up. And it looks good. All right, so before we do our B fold, I'm going to go ahead and apply some glue on both sides to our doubler. And I'm going to glue it in. Anytime you do a glue joint, especially close to an actual cavity, just wipe off any excess that may get down in that cavity. Then we can take our triangle and hold it at 90 for about 35 to 45 seconds. Now, to make our life a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and just pinch this tab just a little bit so it glides right into the slot that we have cut. I'm going to start about a quarter inch in and put a medium bead of glue on the bottom and then also on the sides here. I'm going to rotate this up, pop it into place. Now make sure when you rotate this up you're pushing firmly against the table so you have a nice square edge. Don't ever lift it off the table. And then I'm going to come back in here. And once I fold this up I'm going to come back in and I'm going to hold my triangle up and just kind of move it around while I hold it down. Whenever you have a longer A or B fold, one tendency is to focus on one side but not the other. Make sure that you keep your hands on both ends and that you check for square throughout the whole drying process. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side now. Notice that I'm holding it perpendicular, but I'm also pushing it down towards the table, making sure it's nice and strong. So you can see that we have the bottom plate and we have our side plates next to the bottom plate, so B, B side. Now this is nice and dried, our last step is we're going to test fit our back plate and this is going to also hold it nice and square and if you did everything right you're going to notice that the top meets this perfectly. Now that we're happy with the fit and we've tried that move, we're going to go ahead and put a bit of glue here and on each side. I'm going to rotate it up 90 degrees. Now because this is actually at an acute angle here, which it's supposed to be, we're just going to make sure that the sides are 90 degrees this way. All right, at this point, our Bombay and our fuselage doubler is now done. We're ready to move on and put it in the airplane. So for these next steps, I'm going to go ahead and remove my cardboard build table here and also make sure that there's no glue globs on your building area. It's really important so it doesn't dent your fuselage. With our main fuselage piece back inside, we're going to go ahead and just do a quick test fit, make sure we're happy with everything on both sides. 
and that looks really good. We can put this aside and now we're going to be doing some prep work on our main fuselage piece. The first thing that we want to do is we can just take our nail and we're going to rub that nail back and forth a couple times so it establishes a crease right behind the doubler. Do this on both pieces. We're going to open up this cavity here and we're going to do something called a bevel cut. A bevel cut is where we actually are going to bevel the one edge and we're going to do it on this main window piece. To do that we're going to open up our razor blade. We're going to carefully go right down to the paper with a 45 degree angle. So before we glue our doubler on let's go ahead and make sure that we can accomplish a proper B fold. We're going to once again keep the bottom plate firmly against the table. We're going to rotate this up 90 degrees. That looks good. And that looks good. The doubler should just meet the top plate when you fold it up 90 degrees. Do not do this step unless you have a square or something that's nice and square to help you with aligning this. Usually the bigger the better. We're going to go ahead and make sure we have plenty of glue on our hot glue gun and we're going to glue this in. Notice you don't have to get too concerned about how much glue you put on. It's nice and strong. Go right to that top edge there and press it in. If you want to wiggle back and forth and press down, that's just fine. Notice I'm pushing firmly up, up against the top edge, making sure it's nice and tight. Once that's thoroughly dried, we're going to make sure we have our square handy. So we're going to apply a bead of glue, starting and stopping about a quarter inch from this score cut here and where the bevel is. Notice that I'm favoring the glue to the actual side of the uh, bottom plate. I'm also going to go along and put a very thin bead of glue on the top of the doubler. A little extra strength. We're going to rotate this up 90 degrees. And since I'm only putting pressure from here to here, that's exactly where my hands are going to be. Now the tendency is to go too far. So I'm going to use the triangle to keep me honest here. Happy with that? So I'll just leave that right in the middle. I'm going to give this a good minute to dry because I don't want this to move once I take off the triangle. So a great indication that everything is thoroughly dry and it's nice and square is when I release this, that it doesn't move away or towards the actual piece. That looks great. We're going to flip this over 180 degrees and we're going to do a dry fit once again, making sure we've established our B-fold. But this time, we're going to go ahead and use the doubler as our pinch point. So we're not only going to be applying glue on the bottom, but also onto our doubler. So once we're happy with the fit and everything measures 90 degrees, same process as before. Although this plane is bigger, it's not more challenging to real pleasure. There we go. All right, and as before, we're going to go up 90 degrees and kind of notch that into place. Remember, we have about 45 seconds to work with this, so don't ever panic. There we go. And of course, we're going to grab our square and we're going to hold it in place. And you notice that I'm not only pushing against the table, but I'm also pinching the doubler with my hands as well. Now, if you're getting this nice and square, what you should notice is when you bring these together, that they're nice and lined up. That's a good indication that everything is square and true. 45 seconds to a minute and a half are done. Everything's looking really good here, nice and square. We can now go ahead and we can glue down our top piece that you see here. To do that, we're going to go ahead and slide this down in between the doublers. And then we're going to make sure that this area right here on the table is nice and clear, because we're going to use the table as our friend. We're going to fold this over. We're going to apply a nice bead of glue on the insides of the doublers and also on the side plates here. Now rather than burning our hands and flipping it down, I'll just kind of get it generally in the right place where we want it. I'm going to take the piece of over to the table and while I'm pressing down, I'm also going to press in. Now because I always put a little bit of glue on heavy and that's actually kind of what I want, I'm going to kind of wiggle this back and forth occasionally to make sure I'm not gluing it to the table accidentally. We now have a nice flat joint. If we just push this down, what you'll see is you'll see wrinkles on both sides. Now that we're done with our front windshield, we're going to go ahead and do a quick test fit on the back here. We're going to pinch it together and just make sure we have a similar fit to the windshield. Once we're happy with that, we're going to fold it over 180 degrees. If there's any kind of excess glue in this one joint that's squeezed out, make sure you remove it. And then we're going to favor our glue once again, mostly toward the foam, but enough excess where it'll squeeze out and seal the paper. We're going to flip this down and just like we did before, 180 degrees over, right down on the table. 
And most importantly, we're going to check for square. Now during this process, make sure that the front area here and the rear area are all supported by the table and that nothing's twisting at all. Whenever you do a fuselage, whether you're using foam board, whether you're using Depron, whether you're building out a balsa, always keep this tool handy and check it with every step. All right, one last little check. With every step that we're doing here, this is getting stronger and stronger. Now at this point, you notice that we have no more pieces. So I'm gonna go back to our kit and I'm gonna remove the pieces for the bottom plates of our fuselage. So now that our main portion of the fuselage is done, we're gonna go ahead and put our tension towards the bottom of this. Now the nice thing about this kit is you can actually build this without putting any servos in. So we're gonna do that at the very end when we put our tail and our rudder on. Now you notice that you have two different front pieces here. This is if you're building the twin engine version, you'll be using this piece. If you're building a single engine version, you'll be using this piece. But if you want to fly FPV and you don't want to have to cut a hole and have your gear slide through, or you want to make a three engine conversion, you can use this piece right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weed out the pieces of foam I don't need, plus peel the paper from the areas I don't need. So we have our two different front nose options here. You can notice that we weeded the sides and also removed the paper. Make sure that we don't remove the paper from this front edge. We also got our bottom plate, which can also double as a bomb bay. And we have our rear piece. You can see that this plane goes together very simply, but it's also very involved. We're going to call it the FT Legacy for a reason, and it's because this plane is not going to go away anytime soon. It's going to last a very long time. So we're going to go ahead and test fit this here. And that looks good. We're going to go ahead and we're going to just glue this portion here. This is going to give us a nice hinge that we can use to line up the rest of it. Now you're going to notice when I line this up to go just over the front edge of our bomb bay, that this back lines up perfectly. That's exactly where we want it. I'm going to apply a bead of glue on the bottom doublers and also on the sides. Carefully press this down in the place, flip it over against the table. Now I can release my hand from the back edge and press down and hold firmly. Once that's thoroughly dried, we can go ahead and flip this over 180 degrees. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of glue on top of each doubler. And a nice healthy bead of glue on each side. We're going to flip this over 180 degrees right on the table. And because it's such a big piece, you're going to notice I'm going to wander back and forth, but I'm also, most importantly, going to check for square. So I'll go ahead and hold that square up on the one side, just kind of wander back and forth, pushing down, but also focusing inward pressure on both sides. Little tip here to keep your build as clean as possible. Never use your nails or focus pressure on one point. Use the flats of your hands or your fingers pressing down as a whole. Check for square on the other side. Nice and true. We're just going to go ahead and dress this up a little bit. Put a little bit of glue down. I'll take a scrap piece of foam. Just work it back and forth. Until it's thoroughly dry. So you're going to notice that in your kit we have a hardware pack that looks similar to this. You can also scroll cut this out. Now for this step we're not going to want to use hot glue. We're going to want to use instant glue or CA. We'll do a quick dry fit here. You're going to notice everything goes together nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and I, I like Mercury Adhesive M300M. I'm just going to put a healthy glue bead right down in the corners on both sides. Then to let it wick in, I'll just kind of wiggle it back and forth on both sides. Now, if you do a lot of instant glue, I love this kicker here. It's just an aerosol kicker. Dries it almost instantly. Notice that I'm making sure to go down and test it. And make sure it's just as perpendicular as the fuselage. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a quick dry fit. Make sure everything lines up. Our holes should even line up to our landing gear. And go ahead and put a nice bit of glue on here. And a really cool tip. Take your other piece, spray it with your kicker, and set it down in place. Only do this if you're comfortable with lining up quickly because it's going to dry incredibly fast. It's already dry. Now one of the things I'm most excited about this airplane is the fact that it actually has a landing gear that you don't have to bend out a wire. This plane is so big and we want it to be able to hit some tough terrain, we want it to be strong.
This doubler is going to be the key of making that strength possible to transfer from the landing gear to the fuselage. First, we're going to go ahead and do a quick dry fit. And you're going to notice it's a little bit on the loose side, and that's okay, because we want to squeeze that down into place. Rather than putting the wood and having it squeeze up, I'm going to go ahead and favor my glue on the very top edge, about a quarter inch down, on both sides. Next, I'm going to lie this in all the way down against the bottom former, and then press in and hold it for a good 45 seconds to a minute until it's thoroughly dry. So we have two different options for the front nose. I'm gonna show you how to do the one that's sealed in the front because we can always cut that away later to make room for the power pot if we wanna do either a single engine conversion or a tri-motor. So I went ahead and put this in at the last minute here. This is gonna be an A-fold. I want the paper to completely cover this for strength, but I do need to notch it in once. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut in about a one seventh of an inch. This is just to give you a little extra strength for where your hatch goes so it doesn't bend. There we go. Now I'm going to do an A-fold, so I'm going to favor the glue on the top plate here. I'll even put a little sliver of glue just to seal that edge. And I'm going to go up 90 degrees. Make sure that you have no little excess glue globs here that are going to give you any inconvenience later. Now we have our paper all done. We're going to use our thumbs and our forefingers here, and we're going to slowly rotate this around. making sure that this will bend nice and neat without any crinkling. And that little notch where I cut out on both sides is going to go right in the front. If you don't want to do that, you can simply do a fold over piece of paper. But I wanted this to be a little bit on the extra strong side just for when we nose over. After we test fitted this and we're happy, we can go ahead and put a little bit of glue down here and do a fold over. The reason that I fold this over afterwards is I wanted to make sure it didn't extend too far past. This is especially important if you're scratch building this kit. So just as we did before, we're going to go ahead and lay this down one final time. With the same technique that we used on our fuselage, I want to get the least folded portion first. So I'm going to roll this over, favor my glue on each doubler. And then also on each side of the foam. Take your time doing this. Make sure you don't burn your hands. Kind of doing it cross-handed just for the camera here. There we go. And what I like to do is I like to take it down to the table, press in while I roll back and forth. That rolling action is going to make sure that it's seated nice and tight and that the whole portion is sticking down. Do this for about 45 seconds. Now it felt kind of weird rocking it back and forth like a rocking chair, but if you did that, you're going to see that you have a really beautiful finished edge. Now we can flip this open like a door and repeat the exact same process. Let's just go ahead and do a quick test fit. Make sure there's no surprises. You can see it lines up exactly where we were before, and that's good. First glue on the doublers. around here. Now we have glue on the front edge. And a little drop on both sides. Biggest thing I can encourage you is don't panic when doing this process. If you test fitted this and you got that muscle memory, you're gonna be just fine. Same process as before, back on the table, rocking back and forth. You need to help a little bit on the top once we get this bottom section done for about 30 or 40 seconds, we can flip it over and hold it down. Notice that while this is drying, I'm actually putting pressure in with my hands on both sides. I always like to take a little longer than I may think, just to make sure everything is thoroughly dry. When you flip this over, if there's any kind of glue globs or anything that's blocking this, go ahead and cut them out now while the glue is still a little bit soft. Look what a beautiful finish you have on that front nose. All right, our last portion here is we're going to go ahead and address where the bomb is going to go. Now, I don't need to cut this out right now, and I'd actually recommend that you don't. You also will see notches here that will indicate exactly where you need to cut out for the future. To prep this piece, 
First we're going to do our fold overs on both front and the back. Do this one at a time. Down to the table, count to 15, down to the table. That extra 15 seconds that we use actually gives us a nice solid hard corner. Same process on this side. We're actually going to put the score cut closest to the fuselage. This is going to enable us, if we want to do our bomb bay, to actually have the servo be able to go over the rear hatch, and this will open up the bomb bay. Put a little bit of a curl to it, just barely. There we go. Same process as before. Bead of glue on both sides. I'm not going to be putting any glue on the back. The reason I didn't take this paper off is I want this hatch to be as strong as possible and last as long as possible. There we go. And down to the table, pushing in and rocking back and forth. So while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and remove this little tiny hole that you see right here. This little knockout is going to be for our servo. So if we want to actually put a uh, servo in here to work our bomb bay, we can do so. So for our next step, we're going to go ahead and put our attention towards the hatch. Now this piece hasn't been shown to you yet, so let's go ahead and weed this out and get it ready. Now you're going to notice that there's an etch mark showcasing where a NACA duck can go. If you're going to be powering this with four cell or flying fast or aggressive, or if you want something to route your FPV gear through, you can cut this out to give you a little bit more ventilation. If you do this, you're going to notice that there's actually a portion on the rear of the fuselage that is also etched out that will give you the ability to let the air pass through. First, we'll do our fold over paper. Generally, you always want to do that first, unless I say something different. All right, that's one. We're going to go ahead and do our second. Up 90, down, just kind of move it forward. All right, so we got two A-folds that we need to do, and we're going to go ahead and do that right now. An A-fold is where the side plate is above the bottom plate. And to do that proper fold, we're going to leave the side plate on the table as we rotate the bottom plate 90 degrees and push firmly down against the table. We always make sure we stop and start our glue about a quarter inch from the edge so it doesn't squeeze over too badly. Just like before, we always come back and check and make sure everything is 90 degrees. After about 45 seconds, we'll go to the other side. Same process as before. Side plate on the table, bottom plate getting rotated up 90 degrees, pushing down firmly against the table, and checking for square. Now in our kit, we actually give you two of these. And the reason is, is that over time, it may wear out from taking the hatch on and off. But also, if you have FPV gear set up and you want to be able to make it removable so you can fly line of sight, this is a really good component to attach it to where you can easily put it on and take it off. So we have a hatch, but this is going to fit very tightly into our fuselage, especially if we built it right. So before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and take about a three inch piece of tape. I'm going to fold over the top half an inch. And once I have my little fold over, I'm going to go ahead and tape this on let the rest of it go underneath so I have nice and good leverage to be able to pull that up. It should be really, really forceful. If it's too tight, you can always glue it away. There we go. We really want this plane to have a nice fit and feel. And this hatch makes it super easy to be able to put your battery in and out, whether it's a twin engine or also if you're doing a single engine conversion where you can put your battery in. So our last step on the fuselage before we move on to the rudder and the elevator is we're gonna go ahead and open up the center cavity. Do so, I'm going to go ahead and make my razor blade just a little bit longer. Then I'm going to plunge it down through, kind of angling it in just a little bit towards the fuselage. There we go. Once we go down and through, I'm going to use a real gentle rocking doll motion here to make sure I connect the two lines. You can also use a steel ruler if you wish. Same process on the other side. Don't worry if you cut a little bit into the doubler, it's not going to hurt anything. Pop it open like a top of a pumpkin. And you can see I got this edge really nice. And this edge I can go ahead and dress up. All right, now with our fuselage done, we're gonna go ahead and put that aside and put our attention towards the rudder and the elevator. Let's go ahead and get the pieces ready. All right, so what we have here is we have our main elevator piece. Now this actually is gonna have an airfoil to it. So we're gonna need the spar along with it. Along with that, we have our rudder. Let's go ahead and put our double bevels in here and get our elevator assembled first. 
To do a double bevel, we're going to fold this over 180 degrees. We're going to hold our razor blade at an acute angle, making sure that we don't go below the paper that's right in the middle of the fold over. See, I'm going nice and slow. Now, if you don't like using razor blades, we have a really great video on build techniques not using razor blades, where you can use a marker to crush this edge down. I prefer using this because it gives us a better fold over. It's just a little bit easier. It's a good skill anyone can use. Typically, you're going to take this down to the table, but I want to make sure I give you the best angle possible to see how it's done. You see that this is a little bit wider of an angle than normal. Reason being is it's a very gradual airfoil, so when I fold this over, I'm going to try not to allow the creases to go and crush this down as much as possible. Just like that. If it's a little too tight, you can always go back and you can remove more foam on both sides. Or you can even crush it a little bit with a marker or the back of a screwdriver. You're going to notice two etch marks on both sides here. This is going to be where your uh, spar is going to go. Let's go ahead and glue that down now. Notice I'm not really getting too heavy on the glue. You don't need a lot. And the heavier you make your tail, the harder it's going to make the plane to balance. Now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and fold this over. And now I am going to actually force with my fingers and allow that airfoil shape to come through. The important thing is when we fold this over, what we want to have is the top surface right here where the spar is to be parallel with the bottom surface of the table. Once you have that, we can go ahead and favor on both sides of the spar a very thin bead of glue. And then we're going to repeat that process one more time and we're going to hold it in place until it's thoroughly dry. This is just going to give us the extra strength that we want in the tail to make sure that the airfoil holds and it lasts a long time. Once we're happy with it, we can go ahead and we'll put a little bead of glue right on the leading edge on the main spar and also at the very trail edge. Back down to the table and what I like to do is I like to focus this over the edge here just so as we push it down this elevator can kind of dip a little bit lower than the actual surface of the table. This gives us the ability to get a nice tight joint on the trail edge of the bottom of the elevator. Give us about 45 seconds to a minute and a half. So if we did this right, you're going to notice that the hinge line is right at the back surface of the bottom of the elevator. Once we have that, we're going to fold this over 180 degrees. And again, we're going to go ahead and take our razor blade, hold it at a cute angle, get it as close as possible. Now this is really important that you get as close as possible to the paper. If you cut through the paper, don't worry, you can always repair that with a little piece of tape. We have to take our time. You can always use a uh, sanding block uh, for the step. There we go. Now when we move this back and forth, we should have no resistance going back and forth. If you have resistance, it most likely means that you have a little excess foam close to this paper and you want to remove that. Since we're cutting uh, bevels here for hinges, we're going to go ahead and do that on the rudder as well too. So we're going to fold this over 180 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and cut our bevel on the rudder side. Don't worry if it's not perfect the first time, you can always go back and trim it. Or you can even come back with a sanding block and dress it up as well. Make sure you have no resistance going back and forth either direction. Now to make this plane last a little bit longer, I'm going to go ahead and take a scrap piece of foam. And I'm going to cut an angle at it like this. And with my hot glue gun, I'm going to open up the hinge line. And I'm going to put a very thin ribbon of glue right where the paper and the foam meet. I'm not going to leave it there. I'm going to go ahead and scrape off all the extra hot glue, pushing the hot glue down into the paper and foam, and make it a nice reinforced hinge. I'm going to let this sit open for about 45 seconds or until thoroughly dry. Don't try to close this too early or you'll glue your control surface shut. Let's do this side. Now that both hinges are dry, we're going to go ahead and put this doubler on the elevator. We really want this to last a long time, and this is going to give us the extra strength that we need. Now if you're scratch building, you can simply install a popsicle stick along this area here, but this is a lot stronger, so if you want to use the free plans to cut out your own, you can do so. Also, in our store, we do have something called a short kit, which will give you the plywood, the landing gear, and all the pieces you need without having a scroll cut. All you needed to provide is your barbecue skewers and your foam. So we're going to go ahead and glue this doubler down here. I'm going to go ahead and favor the glue on both sides, just keep it in the way from the slot where the control horn fits. We're going to line this up directly over the slot. 
making sure that we're lining this up nice and centered and that gets full deflection down. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and remove the top piece and these bottom tabs that you see here. We're going to go ahead and test fit the rudder to the elevator. To do this, we're going to fold over the bottom piece. We're going to slide the elevator in to the rudder and then press down. Take your time to make sure that you don't wrinkle anything and this only needs to go to the bottom surface of the elevator. Once it's down far enough, you'll notice that this will flip over and life is good. Make sure that your elevator has good deflection up and down, roughly 12 to 16 degrees. So before we put any glue on here, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and test fit to the fuselage. So to prep the fuselage to receive the tail, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just going to slice our slot right along the side, open up this cavity. There we go. To make this slide in easier, we can pinch the very leading edge of the bottom of the fin together here. Easiest way to install the tail is to guide it in from the rear, bring it down through, and rocking it back and forth. Because every plane is going to be slightly different, if anything resists you, go ahead and find out where it is. It may be down here, it could be up here. Find out where that resistance is, and then trim it flush. This is where our square comes back into play. We're going to want to make sure that this is nice and perpendicular to the fuselage on both sides. We're going to apply a bead of glue on both sides and squeegee it in. This is going to push the glue between the fuselage and the tail and make a nice clean joint. Anytime you put glue down, make sure you go back and check it and make sure it remains perpendicular. Give this about 45 seconds to dry. While it's drying, we can go ahead and put glue on the very top joint here. Now the rudder should be fairly perpendicular to the elevator, but if it's not absolutely perfect, don't worry because we're actually going to be coming back with some brace wires that we'll be able to trim that out. But make sure that everything is as close as possible, if not perfect. Once we're happy with the way that the top of the tail looks on the fuselage and also the perpendicular between the rudder and the elevator, go ahead and lock it down the same way we did with the bottom with a bead of glue. As always, we're going to come back here and we're going to check for perpendicular. To make this plane really durable and last a long time, we're going to go ahead and put some cross braces here with these barbecue skewers. Easiest way to do this is we're going to use the top tail and go right through the little marking hole. And I'm going to angle this up at an angle like this to the point where it meets down with the upper level of the fuselage. With a rotating motion, I can go ahead and kind of drive this in just about the thickness of one piece of foam. At this point, I can go ahead and double check, and because I kind of drove this through, it may be a little bit off center. I can kind of bring this back to where it needs to be. I'm going to mark with my thumb and pull it out. This is going to be the point where I want to cut. Easy way to cut this is to rock it back and forth, getting through those outer fibers, and it breaks nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and just leave a simple mark on this side but I'm always going to double check it before I cut. There we go. We're only going to want to do one side at a time, making sure we get nice and perpendicular with the very first glue joint. So a little bit of glue on the top, a little bit of glue on the bottom. What I like to do is kind of spin these around, kind of draws that glue in. And I'm going to take my triangle or my square, and I'm going to hold this at a 90 degree angle for at least a minute and a half. All right, that's one side down. We can just do a quick visual here. That looks perfect, so I'm just gonna go ahead and crack that where we marked it. A little rotation, we're gonna actually go to the side of that hole and then push it down in. Always check both sides, make sure you haven't moved anything one way or the other, and that looks really good. Check for perpendicular and let it dry. Our next step is to take our extra little piece of barbecue skewer that we have. I'm going to go ahead and put a bead of glue down. Using the pointy end, I'm just going to drive this down in. Then we can take a scrap piece of foam and smooth it out. If you choose, you can also get an aftermarket tail wheel and mount a tail wheel in the spot. Just cut this off flush and mount to your rudder. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put this fuselage aside here for the moment. 
and we're going to put our energy towards the landing gear. Now the landing gear is all pre-bent with the kit. You can also get this separately available at our store. And we're going to need a couple of things to put this together. We're going to need some actual screwdrivers. We're going to need some pliers to put it together. Let's go ahead and first start with putting on our wheel axles. Now we have lock nuts and with the nylon pieces facing outside. We're going to go ahead and start this and we'll tighten it down. Now all we need to do is simply slide the wheel onto our wheel axle, slide the collar on and tighten it down. Make sure you leave a little bit of wiggle room so the wheel is not locked against the collar. We're going to go ahead and bring our fuselage back in. In lining this up, we're going to want to go ahead and remove the area to let the landing gear firmly attached down to the bottom of the plywood. The easiest way to do this is to hold this above it. In this case, we have just a little gap here. And all we need to do with a rocking motion is cut it down to the plywood. Now we're going to go ahead and lay the uh, landing gear right over the top, lining up our holes. We're going to take the provided screws here and screw it down in. Now it's really important that you don't push down too hard onto the plywood or else it could wrinkle your fuselage. Just let the screwdriver do the work. And there we go. The center hole here is a quarter 20 hole. That'll allow you if you want to mount a GoPro or any kind of gear on the bottom, you can do so. So now that our fuselage is done, we're going to go ahead and move on to putting the servos in. Now the nice part is if you're building a three channel version of this airplane, you really only need to install two servos. For these servos, we're going to go ahead and use the control horns that look just like this. And if you're using our flight test version ES08A2s, you're actually not going to need to center these unless you move them accidentally. If you ever have a servo center tool and you want to be safe and sorry, go ahead and feel free to center them now. So because these servos are so far back towards the tail, we're going to need to go ahead and put extensions on them. Make sure you line up the signal wires with the appropriate color. I never like taking a chance, so as I push this in, I'm also going to tape this so it doesn't come apart. So using gravity as our friend, we're going to go ahead and point the nose up here, and we're simply going to feed the servo wire down in. Once you get it far enough down, you should be able to simply reach inside the fuselage and pull it all the way through. With this servo, we're going to go ahead and install it with the servo arm being as close as possible to the hinge line of the rudder. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side with the elevator servo. For the elevator servo and the rudder servo, we're going to make sure that we install the servo arms as close as possible to the hinge line to keep the linkage short. For this step, we're going to go ahead and flip this upside down, letting the tail hang off the edge of the table. So before we glue anything down, we're going to go ahead and get our push rods cut to length here. So with the control hoard facing up towards us, we're going to go ahead and install the push rod using the outermost hole, which is going to give us the most resolution. A little bit of rotational force, we'll get it right down in there. Now we're going to go ahead and push it into the rudder. And centering up the rudder with one hand, we're going to go ahead and make a mark on the third hole out from the servo screw where we want to bend it. I'm going to go ahead and take my needle nose pliers. I'm going to grip it right at the top, right where my thumb left off. Bend it 90 degrees. Grip it about two millimeters down. And bend it 90 degrees straight down. This is called a modified Z-Bend. The nice thing about a modified Z-Bend is it can actually roll into the hook. And if you ever need to adjust it, you can roll it out and push it back in and the torsion of the wire will keep it in the servo arm. So let's go ahead and we'll go to the second from the outermost hole. A little rotation back and forth, that's all you need. That looks nice and even. The nice thing about leaving this loose is if it's slightly off, you can actually move the servo back and forth and get that fine adjustment. You're also welcome to use linkage stoppers, but it just adds another point of failure that you could potentially have. Once we're happy with everything, we're going to start with the control horn. A simple bead of glue is all we need. We'll press it down in. For the servos, I'm just going to go ahead and put a bead on each side. Set it down in place. Then follow up with a little drop on each side. We're going to give this about a minute and a half to let it dry. We're going to do the exact same process on the other side now. Now we did give you enough push rods to be able to use a separate push rod for each one, but make sure you save the excess because you'll never know when you want to scratch build something in the future. We're going to go ahead and take our push rod to the center hole in our servo arm. Again, make a mark with your thumb, making sure that the uh, elevator follows the contour of the top surface of the elevator. Now if you don't like using the, the pliers for this, we do sell a really great Z-Bend tool that I love using. It's the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend. And all you need to do is where your thumb marks is where the center hole is going to be leading from the push rod. So if it's marked here, just put it where it needs to go, squeeze it down. So we're going to go ahead and install our push rod in the center hole that you see here. We'll go ahead and lock down both the servo and the control horn. 
And since we have plywood to plywood, I'm just going to go ahead and use a little bit of instant glue. You can use hot glue if you want, but instant glue is just a little bit stronger. Now, if you want to do the optional bomb bay, you can do this at any time. We're going to be using our ES-08A servo, and we're going to go ahead and pass it down. Now, this is probably one of the most difficult steps in the solar airplane because we're going to need to reach down and glue the servo, pass them through the bottom that you see here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're just going to press this through so as much as possible the servo arm pulls out. Once you're happy with the placement of the servo, go ahead and drop a couple drops of glue and hold it firmly until it's firmly attached. We're going to go ahead and use this servo arm once again. Installing the servo at a 90 degree angle, this is going to hold down the back of your bomb bay. We're going to start with this point that you see here. And we're going to simply slice back, finding that score line that's cut in our kit or pre-cut by you and connecting the two dots. To make life a little bit easier, we can take a piece of a push rod, go back and forth, and kind of open up that gavity a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and open this up 180 degrees. We want to reinforce this hinge and make it stronger. So I'm just going to take a little bit of hot glue, put it right on that edge, and then press it in. Scrape off all the excess. So in our kit, we're going to have a simple popsicle stick that you see here. To keep this from overextending and going down, we're going to go ahead and cut that popsicle stick just to the other side of both sides of the fuselage. We're just going to go ahead and glue that right on the top that you see here. Alright friends, the Legacy fuselage is now done. Now one of the really cool things about the Legacy is it can be built in so many different configurations. So what we're going to have now is we're going to have links down below showing you how to build different versions of the wings so you get to pick your journey and pick your expertise level to build the plane that's right for you.